Welcome to the Twisted Tentacle Tavern. I am your innkeeper, Vase Odin. This is part one of a four-part series on the spell Shadow Blade. In this video, we're going to break down the spell, how it works, and which classes have access to it. Parts two through four, we're going to build some characters out of Shadow Blade, mostly multi-class characters, and using Shadow Blade as a primary tactic. So, ready? Let's go ahead and do this. Shadow Blade is a second level illusion spell found on page 164 of Xanathar's Guide to Everything Sourcebook. Here's the text. It's got a range of self, verbal and somatic components, has a one minute duration, which does require concentration. You weave together threads of shadow to create a sword of solidified gloom in your hand. This magic sword lasts until the spell ends. It counts as a simple melee weapon with which you are proficient. It deals 2d8 psychic damage on a hit and has the finesse, light, and thrown properties with a range of 20 slash 60. In addition, when you use a sword to attack a target that is in dim light or darkness, you make the attack roll with advantage. If you drop the weapon or throw it, it dissipates at the end of your turn. Thereafter, while the spell persists, you can use a bonus action to cause a sword to reappear in your hand. At higher levels, when you cast a spell using a third or fourth level slot, the damage increases to 3d8. When you cast it using a fifth or sixth level slot, that becomes 4d8. And a seventh level or higher, you deal 5d8 per hit with the Shadow Blade. So, as of the making of this video, the spell can only be found in the Sorcerer, Warlock, and Wizard spell list. At first glance, this seems like a big letdown. The spell seems to be geared to melee combatants and short range attackers, but the only classes that can take it are spell casting classes. Really, other than a couple of subclasses, none of the classes that have access to the spell can actually use it very effectively, which leads me to think that this spell is more meant for multi-classing builds, but with some prior planning, you can make it work with a few of the subclasses that have access to it without the need to multi-class. So if you plan ahead and build around it, um, pretty much you can get some use out of it and, and actually make some really fantastic builds out of it. And believe me, it's totally worth it. Uh, one thing I don't recommend is just taking the spell randomly and expecting to get some use out of it. So I'm going to repeat my opinion on it. Only pick the spell if you plan to build around it. What are the drawbacks of the spell? Well, first off, using a second level spell slot you're going to be doing 2d8 damage per hit. When you get this spell at third level, this is pretty good compared to most cantrip damage. But once you hit fifth level in your class, most cantrips are going to out-damage this spell. It's also a concentration spell. Wizards, Sorcerers, and Warlocks all have great concentration spells, so it's conflicts with some of those. Uh, so basically, when you're casting this spell, you need to decide if it's worthwhile and if it's going to be better than any of your other concentration options when you do cast it. None of the three classes who can take the spell get multiple attack as a base class feature. In fact, all the current subclasses available, only two really ever get multiple attack. Pack to the Blade Warlocks with the Thirsting Blade Invocation and the Wizard subclass Bladesinger from the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. The thing is, Pact of the Blade requires that you use your Pact weapon in order to multi-attack, and Shadow Blade can't be your Pact weapon because of the time required to enchant a weapon and make it a packed weapon. So that leaves only one subclass. That would be the Blade Singer, who can get multiple attack with Shadow Blade. Well, uh, except for some bards, and we're going to talk about those, the Valor and the Sword Bard, uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit as well. And uh, the last drawback for the spell, it's a concentration spell. Other than the Hexblade and some bards, you're not going to be able to get armor and even then, it won't be very protective armor. Going into melee is a very dangerous proposition for all of these classes because they have lower hit points than their typical melee classes. And on top of that, the lack of good armor, and you're going to get hit quite often, which means you're going to be making a lot of concentration checks. You will fail and be left without a weapon in melee. So it's pretty rough. So if the spell is so bad, why am I making four full videos about this spell? I'm glad you asked. 
this spell is only bad if you don't go at it with a plan. So let's discuss the good aspects of the spell. Cast as a level 2 spell, your damage is 2d8. But as you upcast it, the damage increases pretty significantly. If somehow you're able to mix it with multi-attack, you're pounding every enemy into the ground like dough. So to make this spell work, we have to be a bit clever with it. That's where the next few videos are going to be delving into. The other benefits of the spell are the versatility of being able to do the same damage at a distance, despite its limited range, that's still pretty good. And the possibility of gaining advantage on attacks against targets that are in dim light or darkness is also pretty darn good. And the ability to summon this blade without material components or an arcane focus, that can lead to some pretty handy uses. You know, if say you guys are disarmed or have to go and meet someone where they take all your weapons, you're able to summon this and uh, still be effective in combat if it comes down to it. The best benefit of the spell is that it deals psychic damage. This type of damage is rarely resisted, and if you can manage to get consistently high damage out of the spell, you can be a powerhouse against just about anything. Basically, the way I see it, uh, Shadow Blade is going to serve you best if you're planning to focus on single target damage. Wizards and sorcerers are notoriously better at AoE, area of effect, and control than single target damage, but with the right build, you may be able to pull off both. Now, let's get into the classes that can take the spell and break them down, and then we'll determine what our best options are for the Shadow Blade build. I wanted to start with Warlock because, in my opinion, it's probably the worst class to, to use if you want to try to make the spell work. Unless you're just dipping into a few levels of Warlock and multi-classing afterwards, there are far better options for dealing damage than Shadow Blade within the Warlock class as a whole. First, Hex works with Eldritch Blast. Hex doesn't work with Shadow Blade because of the concentration requirement. Even from level 3, when you have access to Shadow Blade, you can do more damage with Eldritch Blast than with Shadow Blade, with, you know, combined with the Hex spell. Um, and the scaling keeps up throughout your adventuring career. There's no level where a Hex plus Eldritch Blast, especially when you add the Agonizing Blast invocation, falls behind Shadow Blade. And if you want to go melee with a Warlock, you have a couple of other options too. Hex Blades with Pact of the Blade can do more damage than Shadow Blade from, right from the start. And it scales better than Shadow Blade. Uh, Devil's Sight, uh, it's one of the few ways to benefit from this consistently because you'll have advantage on attacks. But if you have Devil's Sight, you can already be hitting them with advantage while in complete darkness if the enemy doesn't have uh, the ability to see in magical darkness. Plus, if you have a way to cast Magical Darkness, that's a concentration spell. You're not going to be able to combine that with Shadow Blade unless one of your teammates happens to cast Darkness. But that's really a lot to ask just to be able to pull off some advantage hits with Shadow Blade. And not just that, but the Hexblade's ability, Baleful Curse, which grants bonus damage on a hit, takes a bonus action to activate which would prevent you from casting Shadow Blade on the first turn of combat, which definitely means it's not a good synergy with this spell. The Hex Warrior ability that lets you use your Charisma modifier for your attacks for the Hex Blade is really the only ability that works with Shadow Blade, but since Shadow Blade only lasts a minute, you're going to only benefit from this ability for one combat before having to take a short or long rest. I mean, after that, you're not going to be getting that bonus to damage. So with a regular weapon... You, you use that Billful Curse, and you can use it throughout the day with that bonus. So just all around not compatible with Hexblade either. I think I've made my point on the Hexblade with Shadow Blade. Trying to make this work is just going to lead to frustration, but it gets even worse for other Warlocks. Only having two spell slots for most of your adventuring career, uh, along with limited defensive capabilities and no proficiency in Constitution concentration saves means that this is if this is your primary tactic for dealing damage you have a pretty big chance of losing your weapon to a failed concentration save and not, and you may not be able to conjure it back up because you only have two spell slots for most of your career one was used to cast a spell and then that's it and it only lasts a minute anyway so even if you don't lose concentration if you have more than two combats in an adventuring day there goes your main <laughs> tactic for dealing damage just uh basically i'm not quite sure why they give the spell to warlocks other than to encourage people to multi-class 
dip into Warlock, get Shadow Blade, and then multi-class into another class. Is is the only thing that I, I'm thinking is what they were thinking. <laughs> so, to summarize, unless you're multi-classing, don't even bother with Shadow Blade as a Warlock. Maybe in the future we're going to get a Warlock subclass option or invocation that can make the spell better, but we're not there right now. So up until this point, you may notice I've been pretty negative on Shadow Blade. I really wanted to drive the point home that 90% of the time, this spell is just not going to be a good option for your character. Unless you just want that thematic feel of having that Shadow Blade. But if you're still with me right now, you've made it to the part where I will discuss actual ways to make the spell work. And to do that, we're going to start with the Wizards. For the most part, I'd say that Wizards generally are also a bad choice for Shadow Blade. There are three subclasses I'd even consider... But wizards have the potential to know a ton of spells and they have a ton of utility. So you can still get a lot out of a wizard, you know, even if you're using Shadow Blade as a primary tactic. Most of the time, I would say a wizard is a utility type character. So you probably won't be actively dealing damage as a wizard. So having a backup way to hit in case of an emergency can be helpful. But as a primary Shadow Blade build, I'd only consider going Abjure, War Wizard, or Bladesinger. Any other wizard subclass, I probably wouldn't even consider. With most of these three, you're not going to be out damaging a fighter, not even close. But defensive capabilities of all three of these subclasses, you can still serve up some good utility and be supplementing with some decent damage using Shadow Blade, helping the rest of the party deal damage. The Abjurer is probably the poorest choice of the three. Your best asset is your Protective Ward, which can be a significant increase to survivability when in melee. And paired with spells like Mirror Image, Shield, and Blink, you can be in the thick of things and survive well enough to dish out some damage with Shadow Blade. Again, it's still not fully recommended, but if you really want to, I would say that would be one that I would probably consider. The War Wizard is a bit better but it's still not a great option. The ability to use your reaction each round to add a bonus to AC and sa or saves can keep you alive for a little bit longer than the typical wizard. The drawback is that if you use your reaction for this ability and lose concentration, you're not going to be able to recast Shadow Blade next round. So that's something very important to keep in mind. So Blade Singer is pretty much the most solid subclass to build around Shadow Blade without having to multi-class. You get Blade Song, which adds a bonus to concentration saves, big plus, and big, very helpful with Shadow Blade builds. The only drawback is that to use Blade Song, it takes a bonus action. So you won't have that bonus the first round if you used your bonus action to cast Shadow Blade. It's not a huge issue to be fair, but something that you should keep in mind. At level 10 though, you, you do get the Song of Defense to reduce damage taken which is not only going to help you survive, but it's going to reduce the difficulty of concentration saves. Like the Abjurer, you can pair your Shadow Blade with spells like Blink, Mirror Image, and Misty Step to move around the battlefield and boost your survivability as well. But probably the biggest boost that the Blade Singer gets is the multi-attack at level 6. This alone makes the Blade Singer with a Shadow Blade potentially a single target damage machine. At 9th level, you can cast 5th level Shadow Blades, dealing 48 per attack, with 2 attacks per round. That's not bad at all. You're basically doing, in a round, if you hit with both attacks, 8d8 plus your modifiers, which could be up to a plus 10 with the 2 hits. So 8d8 plus 10 per round at ninth level. That's pretty fantastic. You're basically doing Paddle and Smite damage on every hit, twice per round, for up to 10 rounds in a fight, only having used one level five spell slot. That's what makes it even better. You still have your full spell casting capability for everything else that's going on in the scenario or the session. Nothing else even comes close to something like this. To compare a Warlock, which is considered a pretty good consistent damage dealer, a Warlock with Agonizing Hexed Eldritch uh, Blast deals 2d10 plus 2d6, plus modifiers, which are a max of plus 10. So at a maximum, you're doing 30, 32, 42 with a hexed 
Eldritch Blast. Whereas the Shadow Blade, consistently, you're doing a maximum of uh, 74 per round. I mean, that's almost double. So, clearly, a Blade Singer with a Shadow Blade build can outdamage an optimized Warlock of the same level after level 6. Now, what about 11 and up? The gap lessens a bit because the Eldritch Blast does scale up, whereas Shadow Blade is not going to scale up yet at that point. Um, but it still outdamages a Warlock by, by quite a significant amount. Not only that, but the Blade Singer is a full caster with many other tricks up his sleeve. So it makes a Shadow Blade Singer one of the most potent single target damage dealers in the game after level 6. Next, we have the Bards. Bards are a strange choice for this spell. But with Magical Secrets at level 10, you can have a College of Swords Bard actually putting out the same damage as a Blade Singer, plus a little bit more. Between using two weapon fighting a bit more efficiently and having Bardic Inspiration die that they can add to their damage rolls, they can dish out a bit more damage for a few rounds. But their spell list is a bit tougher to work with. So that's a big drawback with the with any Bard, for that matter. They're, basically, it's... Their spell list is smaller than a wizard's, and most of the really good bardic spells require concentration. I think pretty much all the good ones require concentration. So that conflicts with your Shadow Blade a lot. And, um, well, one, one thing you can do alternatively, but it's not as powerful, is to use a College of Lore Bard and pick up Shadow Blade at level 6, and then you can go into melee and use Dissonant Whispers, upcasting it so you can deal more damage, and then have your target when they're running away, provoke an attack of opportunity with your Shadow Blade when they run away. So you'll be dealing Dissonant Whisper damage, and then they run, you hit them with your Shadow Blade for additional damage. It's a cool little tactic, but it gets old pretty quick, and your DM will be savvy to it and find ways around it. So not the most optimal build, for, but for a one-shot, it might work pretty well if you if you wanted to try something like that. Now, we're going to go into a few more tactics when we build a Sword Bard Battle Master in Part 4 of this series. So the last uh, class that I wanted to talk about in regards to Shadow Blade are the Sorcerers. All Sorcerers can dish out massive damage with Shadow Blade. All you have to do is select Quicken Spell as a meta magic feature. On round 1, you can cast Shadow Blade as a bonus action and then attack with it. Or you can cast it and then shoot a cantrip as an action. On round 2... Basically, you can cast any spell that has a casting time of one action and use a Quicken spell to instead cast it as a bonus action, followed by an attack with Shadow Blade. You can be basically blasting min minions with a fireball on the side while swinging a guy in front of you or turning around hitting and then shooting a firebolt at someone else. Sorcerers can do some really cool stuff with Shadow Blade and the Quicken spell meta magic. Uh, so of all the classes, I think the Sorcerer probably has the most versatile and fun spell combinations that you can use with Shadow Blade. We're going to go a little bit deeper into some tactics in part three of this series. Now, you may have noticed that I didn't really focus much on the ability to gain advantage against creatures who are in dim light or darkness. This is because being able to create that situation while maximizing the damage output it's not easily achieved unless you have a teammate who can help create such an environment. The way I see it, this ability is just gravy. If you happen to be in dim light and you get advantage, great. That's just an extra bonus. But don't count on it because if you yourself want to create that type of environment, it's going to be very difficult. The rest of your party is probably not going to want to just focus on creating dim light or darkness just so that you can get a little bit of extra advantage when you make an attack. And that does it for our first part on Shadow Blade. I hope this video was helpful. If you disagree or have something to add to the video, please type it in the comments below. And be sure to check out part two. We're going to be building a multi-class Artificer Battlesmith focusing on Shadow Blade as a primary tactic. I have a really cool character idea, and I think you guys are really going to like it. So definitely check out part two. Once it's up, I'm going to link it up in the you know upper thingy. Uh, until then, have a drink and say a prayer for it. And, um... <clears throat>
Well, except for some bards, and we're going to talk about those. I think I, I think I've uh, I think I've made my point. This is the only thing that I, I'm thinking is what they were thinking. I think I, I think I've uh, I think I've made my point. I think I, I think I've uh, I think I've made my point.